Hi, I'm Roland Glenn and I'm a product manager here at, VM, here at VMware. And today in this light board, we are going to talk about a PKS overview. What is PKS or Pivotal Container Services? So the main goal that we have with PKS is we want to offer self-service of Kubernetes at scale. And I'm going to use K8 as the abbreviation for Kubernetes. And this is going to give our customers the ability to have an agile development process in place so they can rapidly deliver business goals and business value as quickly as possible. So we're going to start with the developers. You know, There's a lot of personas that we built PKS for, but one of the key personas is a developer. And we'll just use a little set of glasses to describe the developer. And we want to be able to offer the service to more than one developer. So we're not talking about one developer, but developers or development teams or DevOps teams. So the key thing that we want to give them is Kubernetes, right? So we want to give them a Kubernetes cluster. And we want to offer the access to that cluster in a way that they are familiar with using. So we're going to use kubectl to represent this in the whiteboard, but we could just as easily be talking about the Kubernetes API. So our goal is to offer these development teams access to our Kubernetes clusters in a way that they're used to consuming them to deliver application value. Now, one of the ways we're going to do that is we're going to give them a new tool. And it's going to be a pretty simplistic tool. We'll just call it PKS. And it'll be offered as an API as well, as well as a CLI. And so what this does is it'll actually be able to interact with something we're going to call, or we call, the PKS API. So through this API, we can have one or more development teams access and request multiple Kubernetes clusters. So we'll just draw three clusters up here to put a context of multiple. And we want to be able to offer that kubectl experience to all three of them from all our development teams. So to be able to run applications on Kubernetes, to be able to really get business value out of this, you also need to have a lot of other key services. One of those other key services that must exist is you need a place to store your images. You need a registry of some sort. So we have VMware Harbor, which is an open source implementation of Docker registry, as well as some other key services like Claire for CVE scanning and Notary so that we can even do image signing so we can ensure that there's a degree of validity to our images that we're storing and pulling. And we've got to be able to offer that store and pull experience. So via something like the Docker CLI, which is another tool that our development teams are already familiar with, uh, we can offer the capability to push images, You can do a push, or, or most importantly, when we need to actually run our images, we'll need to do a pull into our various Kubernetes clusters. So PKS is offering this key harbor registry service. In addition, when we're running our applications, it's just not just a place to run them in Kubernetes and a place to store our images, but we're going to need access to external services. Uh, and some of those services can expose themselves in different ways. So one of, the, one of the concepts that we offer with PKS is we'll have a catalog API. And this will be behind the Kubernetes experience. So the developer would still be accessing all of this through the kubectl API, or through the kubectl commandlet, or through the Kubernetes API. So through this catalog API experience, we can actually offer something in the back end via a, something we call OSBAPI which is the open service broker API, we can actually offer services from key platforms like GCP or other third party services. You know, so if our applications need things like a message store or persistent data external from the clusters um, or some place to store analytical data or stream logging information too, we can, we can expose that via this catalog API all through a consistent development experience through the Kubernetes API, through kubectl. Now, it's not just about external services, but you also need to have network and security. And two of the key things that we really, we really want to offer our development community and our applications uh, that are going to be running inside of Kubernetes is the ability to do load balancing and the ability to define policy. 
declaratively, meaning I can write a YAML structure that says how my firewall should be deployed for a certain application or how that application should be exposed in a load balancer set. And I can do all that through the Kubernetes API and have this done for me in my infrastructure. And last, I need to find a way to offer storage, persistent volume claims. So we'll just put a PVC here. The ability in our infrastructure to be able to offer a persistent storage set for our applications running inside our Kubernetes clusters. And all this is done, is declared through the Kubernetes API. So our developer doesn't have to learn any new tools or, or reach out to any other sets. They're using these key things like the kubectl commandlet and the Kubernetes API, Docker CLI, and our new self-service PKS API so that they can request a Kubernetes cluster to expand and offer all these capabilities. So it's not all about the developer, although that, you know, th these are the key services that we want to offer to give rapid and agile development, but we've got to consider what happens, um, you know, what happens underneath this? What happens actually providing all of these services for us with, with PKS? So what happens underneath this service layer? So the PKS API interacts with a component that we call Bosch. And Bosch does uh, a very important day one capability for us. It offers a deployment mechanism. So when a developer, a developer, a development team makes a request through that PKS API, um, that API is going to is going to build something for us. It's going to build us a, a manifest, and it's going to work with Bosch to make sure that we deploy instances. For example, our Kubernetes cluster here would be built with um, maybe one master node. We'll just use an M and a couple of worker nodes. And we'd have a repetitive set for all of our other clusters that are being deployed, all in a self-service manner. Now, it's not just about the Kubernetes clusters. We talked about, for example, this harbor service. We'll also have Bosch managing the instances for this harbor service as well. And notice I use the term manage instead of deploy. So Bosch deploys all of these for us via request from either the Kubernetes API or a tool that we call OpsMan. And that's a tool that's actually used by another persona that's really important uh, when we talk about PKS and delivering this agile service to our development teams. And that other persona we'll, uh, we'll use with a wrench here. That other persona is the operator, the platform reliability engineer. Then we use OpsMan to interact with Bosch. Now, remember I said Bosch doesn't just do deployment. I mentioned management when we talked about this harbor instance here. There's a lot of day two capabilities in Bosch. And one of those is to monitor and repair. So if any of these instances that are serving these upper level services to our pipelines and our applications um, suffer a failure, um, get compromised, need to be rebuilt, need to be patched or upgraded. Bosch will actually help us do that. Bosch will automatically repair in case of an, where an instance is unhealthy and it will offer, uh, offer us a way to do scalable patches and upgrades as well as scaling. Bosch also, is a, via, exposed via this PKS API, will offer the capability that our developer or development teams can make a request to expand. For example, we can add a worker onto one of our clusters. Um, or our operator can also make that determination based on capacity analysis. What type of scale, dynamic growth and collapse, what type of scale do we need in the infrastructure that's serving all of these services? So we mentioned here, or I mentioned here, that. Kubernetes is also extending out to all these other cool things that we offer to, the, to, our, to our applications and developers. You know, this network security with these load balancers and policy, this persistent volumes and, and catalog APIs. Well, some of that has to be provided by the infrastructure. So network and security, we'll focus on that for right now. Um, in addition to Bosch, another key component of PKS is NSX. And our operator can actually interact with NSX via something called NSX Manager, or the NSX T Manager. So what happens here is our integration with, with Kubernetes is anytime a developer needs a, a policy, or I shouldn't say a developer, but the application that the developer of the pipeline is pushing needs a security policy or needs a load balancer construct, uh, our integration 
with Kubernetes is actually having that automatically created. It's being deployed as the event of the object being created in Kubernetes. There's automation that will actually build fire, distributed firewall policies, load balancer constructs, virtual server constructs, HTTP rules, all based on the declarative YAML that's being pushed in when an application is being instantiated inside of Kubernetes. It's a really powerful capability. In addition, we see our PVCs, our persistent volume claims. We're running underneath NSX is you're going to need an IaaS. And in this case, the IaaS that we're going to be talking about is vSphere. In NPKS, we've actually got the vSphere cloud provider, a project hatchway. And this is vCenter is how the operator would actually interact with our vSphere infrastructure. Now, in Project Hatchway, we offer the capability to expose vSphere storage classes so that they can then result in the creation of persistent volumes and persistent volume claims in Kubernetes so that we can give, static, or we can give persistent storage uh, to our application base. So we put all these things together, and this, this is PKS. So when we look at this, this component of the PKS API and Bosch and NSXT, these components, these key components, make PKS. And what PKS does is, as I mentioned before, our main goal with PKS is that we can offer self-service Kubernetes at scale in production for your enterprise. Thank you.